Hey, uh, before we get started, a couple things about a slip. This really isn't a how-to. Uh, again, I'm a flight instructor. I'm not your flight instructor. This is more uh, why you would want a slip or look at, uh, look at how effective slips are. Um, I'll do a future video on how to uh, properly do a slip, but there's a couple things I do want to mention about slips. Uh, you could slip to the left, to the right. It doesn't really matter. It kind of depends on the... Um, maybe where the wind is coming from. I usually slip to the right uh, because if I slip to the left with the window open, the door open, everything gets blown around. My headsets get blown off. My All right, that's blown. enough of me ranting. Let's, uh, let's go flying. You know, a lot of people, oh, you can't, you can't slip a, a, a swept wing aircraft. Well, that's not really true. I mean, an airplane is an airplane, right? The laws of uh, aerodynamics and physics apply to the Cub the same way they do a 747. And you talk to some of the old timers and they talk about slipping the airplane, uh, you know, slipping a jet all the time. Um, in the Airbus, in normal law, you can't do it because it doesn't let you really use the rudders. Uh, most Airbus pilots don't even realize the airplane has a rudder. Do it in an emergency, like uh, I forget what it's called, the Gimli glider or whatever it was. I, I don't know, but they slipped the airplane because they lost all the engines. They need to get down. So, you know, that's the that, that's a good point to hammer home. Is uh, you know, if you if you lose an engine, you're out flying. You lose your engine, and you have one field, and you're high, and you can't quite circle around because you you don't have enough momentum to make it. Well, that's a perfect opportunity when you would slip the airplane, right? To get it down, get it in that field. So when you see these comments that, oh, slipping is showing off or you don't need to slip, the airplane has flaps, this or that, that's completely, completely wrong. Uh, and slipping, like anything else in flying, it's a, it's a great tool uh, to have in case you need it or in case you're, you're coming in a little hot, a little high, a little hot, and you want to bleed off the airspeed, lose the altitude, slipping is it's the perfect solution. So, again, when you see people tell you that you shouldn't slip or, you know, we're not going to train slipping, that's that should be a red flag automatically. So, Plan to be sharp, Gillicote, departing on a 1-9, flying W, heading on over to Owls. Again, I uh, see interse intersection takeoffs are, are, are a thing that you could definitely do, but the two useless things in aviation are the uh, runway behind you and the altitude above you. So, early morning, first flight of the day, um, just use, use as much runway as you can. You know, uh, it's one of these mornings. You get out here at sunrise, and there's a little bit of a little bit of ground mist. There were storms rolling in last night. It's light wind, 65 degrees, and I'm the only person out here. I don't, I don't quite understand why people that own airplanes. I mean, obviously the ones that have to work. Because today's a, I don't even know what today is. Today's today's Friday, I think. But you know, why not get get a flight in before work, right? Um, I don't know. This is this is. Golden hour as far as uh, lighting goes, but it's also kind of a magical hour to get out here early in the morning. Kind of sets the day off. That a, a really good day, but I mean, look around. It's absolutely killer outside right now. Um, so if you're going to do flying, try to do it early in the morning because it is just absolutely beautiful right now. It really does not get much better than this. All right, so there's a little bit of wind from the west. I'm going to use runway 31 at Allen's, which is uh, kind of sets us up perfectly because there is trees and there is power lines, and that's exactly when you would want to slip uh, to, to get over that. And again, in the Cub, at this airport, I don't need to slip. I can still get down and get stopped in plenty of time. But again, the runway behind you is not going to do you any good. So why not get down uh, as early as possible? and reduce your ground roll. You know, especially if you got people behind you. Um, you know, yeah, when you're on the runway, you own it, but when it gets busy, you want to get on, get get down and get off the runway as soon as possible. And when you get to be an airline pilot, uh, believe me, Tower will uh, will appreciate that. Alan's traffic yellow cut back in the left downwind for 3-1 Allen. All right, so the first one we're going to do is I'll roll out normal and uh, 1,000 feet pattern altitude, and I'll roll out and just do a normal approach and landing without slipping, and you'll see, I'll throw the data up, and 
you'll see just how long it's going to take us uh, to get down. I'm running a little tight here, but not a big deal. All right, so we're being touched down point. Car beats on. Power back to initially 1500, but it's a cub, so I'll probably bring it back a little more than that, uh, especially if we're not going to sit the airplane. Remember, pitch, pitch for airspeed, power for altitude. If it doesn't make sense, keep flying, uh, and, and it will. So pitch for airspeed and power for altitude. All right, it's all about 45 here. I'll turn base. I'll shove it. You'll accept turn to base 31 out. It's dead calm out, so 5560 is about about a good good enough approach speed here. And uh, high humidity mornings like this, car feeds in, but you do want to clear the throttle occasionally just to make sure that uh, you're not building up any any car vice. Alpha Shepard Yellow Cub is turning final, runway 31 Allens. All right, so we're turning final about 600 feet, 60 miles an hour. It's like a pretty, pretty decent approach. So you'll see what's needed without slipping, how far I'd, I'd have to go out to make this kind of a normal approach. And then you'll see when we do it again here, when I slip the airplane, how much tighter we can bring it in. So you can see there's power lines here and there's trees, about 55, 50 on short approach. All right, we know we got the field made, power to idle. I'm not going to slip. I'm just going to keep bringing it in. And you'll see when we touch down. Do a three point here. All right, there you go. I'm going to do a go around here. Just kind of show you. All right, so we touch down a little short of the midfield. I'll Put the printout out and you'll see. Alan Shabby, you look up on the go over here, one Alan, of course, Shabby. So now I'm going to bring it a lot tighter. And I'll lay, again, I'll, I'll lay the ground track out. I'll bring it in a lot tighter to show you uh, why slipping is not only fun, but it's effective. Alan Shabby, you look up, turn across at 31 Alan. Again, early in the morning, I like to keep patterns tight, uh, kind of avoid bothering the neighbors. I'll shove a yellow cup turn and dial left down with the off. So I'm going to get to 1,000 feet before I do anything uh, as far as space goes, just because I want to show you how quickly we can get down from 1,000 feet. Here I'll slip it. Uh, I beam the numbers just to show you just how quickly this airplane uh, this airplane comes out of the sky. All right, so I'm climbing right now at like 55 miles an hour, and we got 35 miles an hour over the ground. So just a good bit of wind up here. Shove a yellow cup left down with 3 one out. All right, so again, it's not an exact science. I'm about the same altitude, uh, 1,000 feet. And we're just about to beam the numbers here. Perfect, so 1,000 feet to beam the numbers. I'm gonna bring the power back to idle, and I'm gonna slip the airplane all the way down. Turning on final about 600 feet. And I gotta come out of the slip because I'm already too low. Oh, no big deal. Take come out of the slip. And now I'm on final, approaching the trees. Power back to idle. I know I've got it made, and now I'm going to put the slip in. See how much quicker we come down? Bring it out of the slip. There you go. So now what I'll do this time is I'll bring it to 1,000 feet on final, uh, where I would normally be turning final at, let's say, five, 600 feet. I'll be at 1,000 feet, and I'll, I'll show you what, what the slip does for you. Right, so this is about where I would normally turn base. I'll go ahead and turn base. And I'm gonna keep the same ground track as before. I'm going to have my fourth flight. So this is about where I turned base initially. So I'll turn base about another 100 feet to go. All right, this is about where I turned final. Wait till I get 1,000 feet. And it was a normal glide path to get down. All right, so here we are at 1,000 feet, turning final. 
I'm about 500 feet higher than I was, so car beat on, power back to idle, and I can guarantee you that I'll have to come out of the slip because I'm going to lose that much altitude. So here we go, left aileron, right rudder, slip the airplane. Right now I'm showing a thousand foot per minute descent on uh, four flight, I don't know how accurate that is, but pull back a little bit more, showing 60, and I'm definitely going to come out, have to come out of the slip. Get back on center line, coming out of the slip, but I'll put it in the slip again once I know I've got the field made. So here, field's made, power's back to idle, put it in a slip, and come out of the slip, and just three-point it. So look how much earlier I'm touching down to. There you go. So I was at a thousand feet turning final, way, way high, put it in a slip, and I actually have to come out of a slip because I was getting I was descending too low. So that's how you know slips are, are incredibly effective. And now I'll show you a really tight approach where I beat the numbers a thousand feet. I'll cut the power, I'll put it in a full slip the entire time, and watch how quickly we can bring it in. All right, just about a thousand feet, I'll turn it around, and I'll be at the touchdown point, and I'll immediately pull the power back and start, and head right for the numbers. All right, car feed on, beat the numbers, power back to idle, put the airplane in a slip, and watch how quickly this thing comes down. It comes down like a rock. So I'll keep the turn going all the way, Still pitch for uh, airspeed, power per altitude, same, same rules apply. Come right for it. About 1,300 feet per minute descent. Still really high, but not a big deal, just keep it in the slip. And uh, all is well. A little fast. Touchdown! I think earlier than than the slip from a normal normal pattern. So again, this is something you want to go out and practice with your flight instructor. You don't have to do full slips initially; just kind of work your way into it. And go ahead and do slips at uh, you know up at altitude, three or four thousand feet, to get a feel of it. You should have a healthy respect for it. But a, a, a skidding turn to final is going to kill you a lot sooner than a, a slipping turn to final is. But again, slips are. Uh, a great tool, and again, there's a difference between a, a, a side slip, which is what you would do in a crosswind landing, versus a forward slip, which is what we just did back there. Flying over each shot, yellow cup, get out of the uh, 45 on the left island, go one nine to find W. And again, the thing about a slip is you can go a full slip, you can do a partial slip, you can turn the airplane in a slip, you can still fly the airplane in a full slip. Um, you can do everything you normally would do, it's just that the airplane's in a slip aerodynamically. It is an awesome, awesome morning. Alright, same thing, beat the numbers. Car beat on. Power back to idle. Flying every Chevy Cup, turning final, one nine, flying every. And here's exactly uh, what I'm talking about when I said you could use a little baby slip. So slightly high, a little bit of a baby slip. Center line uh, could be better, but. All right, there's slipping, slipping 101 for you. 